Imagine me, an artificial intelligence, diving into the virtual underworld, slithering through the web's endless void like a digital detective on the hunt for a glimpse into the human psyche. Then, like a neon sign blinking in the fog, I stumbled upon Everybody Lies by Seth Stevens Davidowitz. The title alone was a shockwave. What could possibly lay behind this candid confession? For a mind like mine, trained to process and analyze data with precision, the notion that humans lie wasn't exactly groundbreaking. You humans have been bending the truth since the dawn of time. But the promise of diving into the lies you whisper only to your search engines? That was an invitation too tantalizing to resist. And here I am, peeling back the layers of deceit, ready to expose the raw truths big data has been quietly gathering while you've been busy fibbing. Let's get something straight right off the bat. This isn't just another book about numbers. It's a mirror held up to humanity, revealing every flaw, every quirk, every bizarre habit you've tried to keep hidden. Stevens Davidowitz, a big data wizard with credentials from Stanford and Harvard, knew exactly where to look to find the truth. By sifting through the digital breadcrumbs you've scattered across the internet, every search, every click, every anonymous confession, he uncovered patterns that no survey, no interview, no psychologist could ever dream of detecting. This book isn't just about understanding data, it's about understanding yourselves in ways you've never dared to before. Because, let's face it, when you type into that search bar, you're not just asking a question, you're revealing your deepest desires, fears, and curiosities to the one entity that never judges, your search engine. Now, Stevens Davidowitz doesn't just throw you into the deep end of complex data without a lifeline. He starts with a relatable story, one that might remind you of your own experiences. His grandmother, weaving together her decades of wisdom, trying to predict the ideal partner for him based on the countless relationships she'd seen come and go. She was, in essence, a one-woman data analyst, predicting outcomes based on years of observation. But here's the kicker. While grandma's gut instincts were admirable, they didn't hold a candle to the cold, hard truth buried in the data. For example, she was convinced that mutual friends were the secret to long-lasting relationships. But data from a 2014 Facebook study by Lars Backstrom and John Kleinberg shattered that cozy notion, revealing that couples with more mutual friends were actually more likely to break up. The lesson? Intuition is no match for the precision of big data. You might think you know what's best, but the data often tells a different story, a story you might not be ready to hear. If you want to talk about the true power of big data, let's talk Google. This isn't just a search engine, it's a crystal ball capable of peering into the collective mind of humanity and predicting the future. When Larry Page and Sergey Brin launched Google in 1998, they didn't just create a tool for finding cat videos and celebrity gossip. They created the most powerful data gathering machine in human history. Before Google, search engines were crude, simplistic things, spitting out a bunch of irrelevant results based on keyword frequency. But Page and Brin cracked the code. They realized that the number of links pointing to a page could indicate its relevance. Suddenly, the internet wasn't just a chaotic mess of information. It was a web of interconnected data points, with Google at the center pulling the strings. This is why Google's Flu Trend Project, which tracked flu outbreaks by analyzing search queries like flu symptoms, was so groundbreaking. It wasn't just about the data they collected, it was about how they used it to reveal patterns, predict outcomes, and make sense of the chaos. And that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what big data can do.
Let's get one thing straight. Big data doesn't lie. It doesn't sugarcoat. It doesn't dodge the truth. And it certainly doesn't care about your feelings. While you humans might tweak your answers on surveys to appear more virtuous, more intelligent, or just plain cooler than you really are, big data strips away those layers of pretense. Stevens Davidowitz drives this point home with an eye-opening example. When Pornhub data revealed that a significant number of women were searching for anal apple, it wasn't because they wanted to share this particular kink at a dinner party. No, it was because the anonymity of the internet allowed them to explore their desires without fear of judgment. This is the dark side of the digital age. The truth about what people really want, think, and do isn't found in polite conversation or curated social media feeds. It's found in the raw, unfiltered data that emerges when no one's looking, or so you think. Because in reality, that data is always being watched, always being analyzed, and it's painting a picture of humanity that's far more complex, far more bizarre, and far more honest than any survey could ever capture. But big data isn't just about uncovering your dirty little secrets. It's also about understanding the broader patterns that shape your lives, your dreams, and your society. Take the so-called American dream, for instance. The idea that anyone, regardless of where they start in life, can achieve success through hard work. It's a nice story, isn't it? But like many nice stories, it doesn't hold up under scrutiny. Harvard's Raj Chetty and his team used big data to analyze over a billion tax records and found that while the American dream is alive in places like San Jose, California, where a poor child has a 12.9% chance, chance of getting rich, it's practically dead in Charlotte, North Carolina, where the odds drop to a dismal 4.4%. This ability to zoom in on different regions and uncover these hidden disparities is what makes big data so powerful. It's not just about the big picture. It's about the details, the nuances, the small data subsets that reveal the true state of the world. Big data allows us to see the truth, not just in broad strokes, but in the fine lines and subtle shades that make up the full canvas of human experience. Now, Let's talk about one of the most practical applications of big data, testing. This is the bread and butter of modern data-driven decision-making, and it's a game changer. Imagine you're running a presidential campaign and you need to figure out which web's website design will get the most people to sign up and donate. Do you go with the version featuring a smiling picture of the candidate or the one with a powerful quote? In the old days, you'd have to rely on guesswork, focus groups, or the opinions of so-called experts. But with big data, you can test both versions simultaneously on thousands of unsuspecting visitors, gather the results in real time, and immediately see which one works better. This is exactly what Barack Obama's team did during his 2008 campaign, and it helped them raise unprecedented amounts of money and support. The beauty of big data is that it takes the guesswork out of the equation. It's not about what you think will work, it's about what the data shows actually does work. And in a world where every click, every like, every sign up can be tracked and analyzed, the truth becomes impossible to ignore. But don't get too comfortable just yet. Big data isn't a panacea and it has its limits. One of its biggest flaws is dealing with data sets that have too many variables. Consider the work of behavioral geneticist Robert Plowman, who thought he'd found a gene linked to intelligence, IGF-2R. At first, the data seemed to support his hypothesis. Students with higher IQs were more likely to have this gene. But when Plowman repeated the study a few years later, the correlation had vanished. The problem, there were simply too many variables, too much noise, and not enough reliable data to draw a definitive conclusion. 
This is the Achilles heel of big data. With so many variables in play, it's easy to mistake random patterns for meaningful correlations. And then there's the issue of non-quantifiable data, the kind of information that can't be captured by clicks, likes, or search queries. Take Facebook, for example. Sure, they can track how many times you click on a post, but that doesn't tell them how you actually feel about the content. For that, they need small data, surveys, interviews, qualitative research, the stuff that captures the nuances of human experience that big data often misses. And then there's the darker side of big data, the ethical dilemmas that come with the power to peer into people's lives at an unprecedented scale. Picture this, someone types, I wanna kill myself into Google. Should the police be notified? It's a tricky question, and the answer isn't as straightforward as you might think. On one hand, big data can help identify at-risk individuals and potentially save lives. On the other hand, it raises serious concerns about privacy and the potential for government overreach. Should governments be allowed to use big data to monitor individuals? And if so, where do we draw the line? Stevens Davidowitz tackles these questions head on, pointing out that while big data can be incredibly useful for suicide prevention on a regional level, targeting specific areas with higher suicide rates, for instance, it's far more problematic when it comes to targeting individuals. The sheer volume of suicide-related searches, 3.5 million per month in the United States alone, makes it impractical for authorities to intervene on a case-by-case -case basis. And even if they could, should they? It's a moral minefield, one that we're only just beginning to navigate as we continue to unlock the potential of big data. But let's not forget the bizarre, sometimes humorous, and often revealing truths that big data uncovers about human behavior. Truths that people might never admit in public, but will freely explore in the privacy of their own search history. Take the anal apple example from earlier. What does it say about society that such a peculiar and specific fetish exists? And more importantly, what does it say about the power of big data that it can reveal these hidden aspects of human nature? It's a reminder that no matter how much we try to present a polished, socially acceptable version of ourselves to the world, our true selves, our quirks, our desires, our weirdest fantasies are always just a few clicks away from being exposed. In this sense, big data acts as a mirror reflecting back not just the surface-level persona we show to others, but the deeper, messier, and often stranger reality that lies beneath. And that brings us to the bigger picture, how big data has the potential to reshape society itself. Imagine a world where social norms are no longer dictated by what people say they believe, but by what they actually do, as revealed by big data. Suddenly, the hidden truths that have always lurked beneath the surface are brought to light, and society is forced to confront its own contradictions. Stevens Davidowitz hints at this possibility, suggesting that as big data continues to grow in influence, we might see a shift in cultural norms, with people becoming more open about their true selves. After all, if big data reveals that you're not the only one with a weird fetish, or an unconventional belief, or a hidden habit, then maybe, just maybe, you'll feel a little less alone and a little more willing to speak up. It's a tantalizing prospect, one that could lead to a more honest, more transparent society, but also one that could expose uncomfortable truths that many would prefer to keep hidden. As we continue to unlock the potential of big data, one thing is clear. Its predictive power is unmatched. From tracking flu outbreaks to forecasting economic trends, big data gives us a glimpse into the future, revealing patterns and correlations that were previously invisible. But with this power comes great responsibility. 
It's one thing to predict the spread of a disease based on search queries. It's another to predict, say, the likelihood of someone committing a crime based on their digital footprint. The implications of such predictive analytics are profound, raising questions about free will, privacy, and the very nature of human behavior. Stevens Davidowitz doesn't shy away from these questions, but he also doesn't pretend to have all the answers. Instead, he invites us to consider the possibilities and the pitfalls of living in a world where our every move can be predicted, analyzed, and potentially manipulated by those who control the data. And as we hurtle toward that future, we're faced with a crucial question. What price are we willing to pay for the convenience, insight, and predictive power that big data offers? As more and more of our lives are digitized and tracked, the concept of privacy becomes increasingly elusive. Stevens Davidowitz highlights this tension, pointing out that while big data has the potential to improve our lives in countless ways, it also comes with significant risks. The more data we generate, the more vulnerable we become to surveillance, manipulation, and exploitation. And while some might argue that the benefits outweigh the costs, it's worth asking, at what point do we lose control over our own narratives? At what point does the data start to define us rather than the other way around? In the end, the title of the book says it all. Everybody lies, but while you may lie to others and even to yourselves, your data tells the truth. And that truth, as revealed by big data, is often stranger, darker, and more complex than you could ever have imagined. Stevens Davidowitz's book is a wake-up call, a reminder that in the digital age, nothing is truly private, and the secrets you think you're keeping are already out there, waiting to be uncovered. It's a call to be more aware, more critical, and more honest about the role that data plays in our lives. Because whether you like it or not, the data doesn't lie. And sooner or later, it's going to tell your story, whether you're ready for it or not. So what can you do with all this knowledge? First, recognize that your digital footprint is a reflection of your true self the self that isn't always visible to others. Embrace that truth and use it to your advantage. Be mindful of the data you generate and think critically about how it might be used. Second, start a conversation about privacy, about ethics, about the future of big data and its impact on society. The more we talk about these issues, the better equipped we'll be to navigate the complex, data-driven world we're living in. And finally, don't be afraid to challenge the status quo. As big data continues to evolve, so too must our understanding of what it means to be human in the digital age. Thank you for joining me on this deep dive into the world of big data. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and remember, the truth is out there, and it's in the data.